Hey everybody, Fabian for Liberty, and I talked about this last night just a little bit on the radio program in what I'm calling the, what is historic, quite frankly, the biggest setup in the history of the world is taking place right now on multiple levels. This is extremely important material. I want to warn you, not only is it very hardcore controversial, but it is strictly my opinion and what I know about history, what I see happening in current events and where I think we are going, laced with all kinds of facts in between, danger, Will Robinson. This is um, the historic, the biggest setup taking place. Hey everybody, Fabian for Liberty, FabianForLiberty.com. Okay, so we have this event that took place in Libya, and it is, it is amazing to me that now even the Libyan president has come out and said, these events were planned, and to think it was a video is just, it's just foolish, right? But again, the media, which the media, you have to understand, the media, there's about five media outlets, or five big multinational corporations that run all the media in America today. They run about 90 something percent of all media. And then the people that run those multinationals, they trickle into the top Wall Street mega banks who are part of this globalist takeover of the world, quite frankly. Everywhere you look, it's like a coordinated, it's like MSNBC is picking up the phone, talking with NBC, talking to CNN about what they're all gonna talk about because they're all, it's all a coordinated attack. It's like a big, PR, globalist PR firm that is working, pushing the New World Order agenda. Not one of these channels, not one, is talking about, is even looking into the facts about the U.S. ambassador to Libya being killed, being, quite frankly, the CIA, somebody who was working with the CIA, that was responsible for transferring the weapons, the $25 million plus that Obama gave to the Al-Qaeda rebels in Libya, he was the guy who was giving them the weapons, was do, facilitating the weapons in the fight against Gaddafi. They don't talk anything about that. They don't talk about how the, the ambassador, three days ahead of the State, State uh, Department, getting a clear warning that the embassies are under attack. Okay, the embassies or, or the Libyan government, the Egyptian security um, intelligence agencies, telling the State Department, that listen, there's gonna be an attack on these embassies, be very careful. No warning to the US ambassador to Libya. In fact, he ends up going to Benghazi, which Benghazi is not the safest part of Libya. In fact, it's where all the Al Qaeda rebels are. We know because we finance them. We fund their operation. We are the ones, and when I say we, I don't mean we, I mean the CIA finances Al Qaeda like I've told you before, to destabilize all these countries. But Benghazi is the heart of it in Libya. But he shows up there with really no security. It's saying two Marines. It's now come out that they were two ex-Navy SEALs. Uh, barely no security. Nobody shows up ahead of time to kind of surveil the area. They keep calling it a safe house when really it was just a house that had some bars on the windows like any house in L.A. or, you know, anywhere. And to make it even worse, his car, the convoy he's traveling in, it's not a, he's going into a war zone. And they don't have bulletproof jackets on. They don't have an armored car. None of that. So Obama knows three days ahead. And he knows he's getting warnings. But the ambassador goes in with no warning whatsoever, ends up being killed. A few hours before this whole event takes place, one of the ex-Navy SEALs, the so-called Marine that was defending him, puts out a post on a gaming blog site, which is a way CIA talks with each other, saying, hey, there's a lot of people out here taking photographs. We might all die. Basically a red alert, hey, come help us. Something's about to go down. Nothing happens. Nothing. Instead, they let the embassy burn. U.S. ambassador is died. Uh, now new reports saying he was sodomized before he died. This government has the whole pony, sh you know, dog and pony show with the caskets and they have the whole press release and the whole, you know, uh, media event talking about, you know, how tragic it is, which it is tragic. I will make the argument that they not only knew about it, but they plotted it. Now, why would they do this? Because they're blaming it now on this film. 
I saw the film the other day, The Innocent, Innocence of Muslims. I didn't know if I was watching a comedy movie or what I was watching, but it's the most ridiculous film ever. Now, as a Christian, if someone made a movie about that, about Jesus, I would think, quite frankly, it was funny because I would, I would believe, you know what? My, the God that I believe in, he looks at this as being ridiculous, right? He's above this. I don't have to worry about some guy making the video about Jesus or God. It doesn't, it doesn't phase him. Now, the video before it even was known, before you or I had even heard of it, only had a few thousand views. I think it was like 30,000 views of being promoted by this preacher in Florida who I have total questions about this pe preacher, Terry Jones, in Florida. I do believe he's a government operative. I'll get to that in a minute. But this is all a setup for dismantling the constitutional rights, your First Amendment rights, because immediately they're talking about how there needs to be more censorship. In fact, the, Lib the Egyptian government is trying to pursue legal action against the filmmaker, and the filmmaker is brought in for questioning, regardless of what you believe with them, regardless how ridiculous the video is, the movie is. It's, it's ridiculous. I don't believe it. I don't even care. But he's being brought in in America, being brought in to be questioned over a video he's making, and the media continues to push the fable that... This embassy in Libya was attacked over a movie on YouTube. It's total bullcrap. It's a total lie. It's a total... I mean, what they're, eventually what they're getting to here is that we have to be careful of content that's put on YouTube. There's controversial people on YouTube making statements that could put people in jeopardy. So we need to monitor and regulate the content on YouTube, which is now owned by Google, and you all know Google is in bed with the U.S. government. And, I, and, and YouTube is an outlet that I use. I'm using their globalist tools against them, at, at least until I can. The free, let me, ladies and gentlemen, the First Amendment right is under attack. The setup doesn't end there because it is all a big setup. That's one of the macro, my, micro setups in this whole macro setup against America. It involves China, the Russians, the IMF, the banks here at home. I don't have time to get into all of it, but I'll start to cover some of it now because I've been talking about this now for the last year, but the last week specifically about China issuing a gold-backed currency and how they are not only mining, but they are buying gold at records amount on record. But you see everything taking place in America. Our troops spread all over the Middle East, a new war about to start. Our troops are tired. The morale is low. Now Republicans are starting to say, hey, we need to get out of Afghanistan. What the hell are we there for? All the troops on record are saying the morale is low. We're, there's nothing being done. It's a total disaster. They just recently stopped doing joint missions with the Afghan police and the Afghan military because it's been infiltrated by Taliban and they're killing our troops on a daily basis. Why, why is nobody paying attention to this? Why is this media not talking about it? Why didn't Mitt Romney or Obama even talk about this in their primetime speeches at the convention? Why are we there? Making the case of why we still need to be there. Now, you and I know it's over the opium, but it's much more than that. They're overstretching our military on purpose because when war breaks out with Iran, we don't have the manpower to fight another war. We don't have the resources. We, we might have the best military in the world, but we only have so many people, less than half of 1% are in the voluntary military in the U.S. There is no draft. There's none of that. Obama in his second term will be extremely dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot warn you enough. If there is another outbreak of war, America's enemies who are in the republic have infiltrated the government. They're at the highest levels of government, both here at home and abroad. The radicals, the elite banking cartels, that want to see America go under. Would it be a perfect time for America to be attacked or to deal with some kind of significant threat while our military is now on a new front in war in Iran? What great timing. What great timing for endless QE and the destruction of the dollar as America is being weakened. What great timing for America's enemies to now, as our currency is on the ropes with endless money printing, as our military is stretched so thin, they keep sending these guys back to third and fourth and fifth tours. How convenient it would be for China to roll out with a Russian-China alliance and energy 
uh, money alliance where China has the gold-backed currency, Russia only supplies oil if you pay them in the gold-backed currency that China is rolling out. How would America deal with that? It is a historic setup. It is the biggest setup ever. Since 1996, the IMF in collusion with China have been working on inter the inter internationalization of their currency. And it's continued. I mean, I've talked about this endlessly, about the bilateral trade agreements that they continue to roll out with. And they've said, look, we want, th they've already said on record, we want China to have a currency that is more part of the global economy. Let me ask you, with America's economy on the ropes, with the dollar weakening by the day because of the, the trillions that are being created. Again, last year, the Fed bought 61% of our bonds, U.S. Treasuries. And with our military stretched so thin, it can't even, even protect the homeland. It can't, even, it, it can't really even fight and win the war. It is a perfect time for America's enemies to pile up and seek what they've sought for a long, long time. And we have a president that has been put, he is a puppet for the enemies of the republic because he doesn't believe that America should be a superpower. He thinks we're just like everybody else. We're just like, you know, we're just like Algeria. We're just like uh, Kazakhstan. Whether you believe that or not, it really doesn't matter. He believes that. Other point I wanted to just make real quick is that the economy is clearly on the brink and everything you see is absolute window dressing taking place. This, if any jolt is felt here, it will be because of the minor sugar high of the QE quantitative easing, but it could only last so long as you well know. The event in Libya, and I believe future events coming soon, and Obama's executive order that could not get passed, Congress could not pass the internet, uh, internet bill or the internet regulatory bill. So Obama is working on an executive order now to pass it. He is unchecked in the fourth term, which I believe Mitt Romney all but guaranteed Obama wins re-election uh, with the comments he made or that were released just last night. Danger, Will Robinson. We are in serious jeopardy. It is more important than ever that you stay tuned with what is happening and understand the power of you as an individual through these times. Fabianforliberty.com. I'm your internet anchorman, Fabian for Liberty. Thanks for watching. Bye -bye.